A critical question in the West today is, can freedom survive where virtue isn't able to flourish? Hi, I'm Chuck Colson with this week's Two Minute Warning. In mid-March, Greg Smith, a Goldman Sachs executive, published an op-ed piece in the New York Times entitled, Why I Am Leaving Goldman Sachs. The piece, which stirred great controversy, described the culture at the investment bank. What troubled Smith most was the firm's disregard for the well-being of its clients. As he put it, the interest of the client continues to be sidelined in the way the firm operates and thinks about making money. Instead of treating the clients with respect, executives refer to them as Muppets. Instead of asking how much money the bank made for its clients, the question is, how much money did we make off the client? Smith sums up his reasons for resigning by saying that working at Goldman Sachs just doesn't feel right to me anymore. Well, if what he says is true, the reason it doesn't feel right to Smith is that the way he describes, what he describes are the, violates one of the classic virtues, justice. What Smith described may not violate any law, may even be good business, but it violates basic norms of justice. The reason this isn't immediately obvious is that we typically see justice almost entirely in cold legal terms, that whatever is not against the law is not unjust, even though it may not be exactly just or fair. But the virtue of justice goes far beyond what is or is not legal. In fact, if you reduce justice to law, you get the kind of predatory environment Smith denounces. In Christian terms, justice is not about claiming our rights, it's about honoring the claims others have put on us. As Thomas Aquinas put it, quoting the seventh century theologian Isidore of Seville, justice is rendering to each one his right. The goal of justice is promoting the common good. It's the virtue that orders our shared lives together, whether it's paying a fair day's wage for a fair day's work or assuring that lawbreakers pay the penalty for their actions. The end is the same the welfare and right ordering of the community. In other words, the end of justice is shalom, a wonderful Hebrew term which means right relationships, right order, human flourishing. A society in which justice is reduced to what is spelled out in law books or in contracts is a society that will fall apart because the only thing that can hold it together is force, physical, economic, or both. Like prudence, temperance, and courage, the way we become just is by cultivating the habit of justice. The goal should be a sustained or constant willingness to render what is due to our neighbor. Ultimately, being just, like being prudent, temperate, and courageous, should be an automatic, ingrained habit. Obviously, this wasn't happening at Goldman Sachs. The truth is, few of us exhibit the kind of sustained or constant willingness to cultivate justice, or any of the other virtues for that matter, which is why so much of life, both on, on and off Wall Street, just doesn't feel right anymore. And it's why we've spent these past few weeks talking about the virtues. For more material on the virtue of justice or to see any of our previous two-minute warnings on virtues, visit colsoncenter.org. I'm Chuck Colson. That's this week's two-minute warning. And of course, you and I know that politics is nothing but an expression of culture. So where are we as a church to be concerned? We're to be terribly concerned with bringing Christian truth to bear in all of culture. Again, something Lewis talked about repeatedly. So that uh, we can govern ourselves, so that there is a sense of virtue among the people, so that we can behave responsibly.